viewpoints on the talk station FM 107 AM 1240. Continuing our conversation about the uh, uh, import of the late Walter Jones, we've asked Rudy Rudolph to join us for a few minutes this afternoon. We'll chat with him about uh, the role that the congressman has paid, played uh, in issues of coastal concerns and uh, in the process probably get caught up on what's happening, particularly in Carteret County. Of course, Rare Rudy is the uh, Carteret County Shore Protection uh, Officer. And with that, Rudy, good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you, Awkward. I really appreciate you calling me on this subject. Well, this is a big issue. And uh, the congressman, we've, we've seen... Uh, a lot of accolades, uh, particularly on his, well, his integrity and uh, his uh, willingness to uh, step out uh, when others might be more hesitant. And in the process, the work that he's done for the military and uh, particularly the military families and the veterans. But uh, I, we were just chatting a few moments ago with Carolyn Mason and Margaret Poindexter of the uh, Foundation for Shackleford Horses. And I made note of the fact that those horses are uh, part of his website. A lot of people see yeah. those horses and they don't realize that this is something that he he basically um, uh, Champion. created, championed. Yeah, thank good good yeah. word. Thank you very much. But other things that he's done as well, and he's championed the um, continued improvements of the coastal region. And um, how important has he been in to you and to the other uh, coastal communities when it came to things such as beach nourishment and maintenance of our, our underlying uh, tourist uh, industry? Yeah. Uh, one, well, wonderful. Um, you know, I mean, he, he was known as a budget hawk, a deficit hawk, I ought to say. But, right, right. Yeah. You know, every, every year Congress determines how much money they're going to provide for energy and water or the military. And as long as, you know, we could point to certain directions and, and kind of play that a shell game and not go over that number, is, you know, more than willing to, you know, to fight for us um, for, you know, funding for, for the for the South Jeff Waterways, Morehead City Harbor, and, of course, Beach Nourishment. But, you know, where where the kind of, um, where, you know, really mattered was, was the policy issues um, and, and, Things like um, we would go up to Washington, D.C., and and get a meeting with the a National Marine a Fishery Service. Mm -hmm. That of course he of course he would help how 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 help us get in the first place. Right. And you know we would see him beforehand and kind of explain the issue and <laughs> you know and, yeah. and and immediately he would he would have his you know a chief of staff uh, follow us to the meeting and make sure he was there and kind of leverage. Um, of the power of, of that office with us there. So, and other things like um, if we had a conference call with the Army Corps of Engineers about dredging and you had a certain issue about, about you know, where to dredge and why and funding, um, you know, he would have a staff, like, you know, on that conference call. And there's a lot of small stuff that you just don't see because everything is so, you know, a national issue orientated but uh right just a lot of a lot of legwork that uh was you know very 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 uh, helpful for us you know one of the things that uh of course he had to deal with was um initially and please correct me if i'm wrong but initially uh, beach nourishment and things of this nature were um uh not normally funded they well they're not normally funded but they this required um uh you know political uh, momentum to um, uh -huh. to to get the funding for uh, beach nourishment, yeah. it wasn't it wasn't something that was just uh, budgeted. Am I correct on that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I think that kind of speaks volumes to him too, because you know, because he had so much respect there, because he kind of sub sub oak his mind. Uh huh. Um, you know, if, if if he kind of kind of stuck his so duck himself out on a limb about you know mm -hmm. beach you know, nourishment. Or waterway dredging, I think people really listened to it because they know it meant a lot to them. Right. Um, so you know, the stuff like that was just um, invaluable for us. Well, then, of course, and and during that tour, he the uh, nourishment issue and all the expenditures with the Corps originally were earmarks. They're no longer earmarks. Right. Am I correct on that? Correct. Correct. That's and, right. And so um, he he had to navigate the uh, the ins and outs of earmarks to get uh, uh, the uh, 
uh, Congress to agree to his uh, his needs and or the needs of his uh, district. And to your point a moment ago, in spite of his maverick nature, and and um, I, I would argue that uh, some members of Congress were not always comfortable with him, shall we say, were willing to go along with him. But to some degree, they did respect him enough that when it came to issues of coastal investment and coastal concerns, they did listen, as you just said a moment ago. Yeah, I mean, and you also have to think, and I read this somewhere, he had the largest coastal district right. geographically in the, in, the, in the continental U.S., Wow. So again, you know, I think between that and the kind of and the kind of lineage of his father, uh-huh. um, you know, if he spoke out about a, a coastal issue, you know, people were you know listening for sure. This this whole issue, and let's talk about this for a moment before we go to the break. Um, there are a lot of a uh, lot of uh, stresses, and the primary uh, issue, of course, for our region. Uh, we've got we talked about shallow water inlets. We've got the issue of beach nourishment and and dredging, and of course uh, harbors, uh, Wilmington, and um, which is not in his district, but still of major concern, and uh, Moorhead City, significant investments, federal government investments, but the Corps of Engineers has limited funds, and uh, yep. there are other uh, major distractions, or shall we say. Uh, efforts to get the Corps to invest more in those areas, and particularly the rivers, the uh, Mississippi, the Tennessee, sure. uh, and then, of course, you've got the Gulf Coast and areas like that. So the, gov- the, the, the congressman really, at times, had to push against some pretty big uh, demand. Uh, well, I don't want to say demands, but pretty big challenges to get attention for North Carolina, did he not? Correct. I mean, you know, we used to say, if you're little, you lose. Because, you know, all the money was going to Oakland Harbor and Long Beach Harbor. And then, you know, the, as you said, the Mississippi, yeah. Savannah, stuff like that. So, uh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, and, you know, uh, you know, another thing, too, if there was a piece of legislation coming up through a committee, you know, an abstract committee that nobody ever heard of, and, you know, House Bill 4,220, you know, that had maybe a, a coastal barrier resources you know, issue that we were concerned about. Again, you know, he would make sure that we knew about that. We would talk about it and, you know, kind of, you know, strategize on ways to make sure it, it didn't harm us. Uh, so, yeah, just plenty of examples like that. All right. I'm going to continue this conversation here for a few more minutes with our guest, Rudy Rudolph, Carter County Shore Protection Officer. We're going to find out uh, how things are doing on the efforts right now for further beach nourishment and also uh, dredging. Uh, This is a topic that really does relate to the experience of the past year with Hurricane Florence and the fact that uh, the beaches along Bogue Banks uh, in Carteret County fared very well uh, as a result of uh, being proactive. Stay with us here for more on Viewpoints on the Talk Station with Rudy Rudolph. Viewpoints on the Talk Station, FM 107, AM 1240. Our guest this afternoon, Rudy Rudolph, Carter County Shore Protection Officer. We were chatting a few moments ago about the role that Congressman Walter Jones, the late congressman, uh, played in our region and the support that we benefited from as a result of uh, his efforts, the fact that we did get uh, federal funding for a lot of projects and uh, had to compete aggressively. And and, uh, Rudy, before we move on to the topic, we're uh, moving on to other issues. A lot of people are not aware that, you know, the Corps of Engineers has a limited budget in spite of the fact that we're looking at a $22 trillion deficit, uh, something that Congressman Jones would be, uh, he probably is uh, having a, 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 a little bit of a conniption right now. Uh, because, as yeah. you said earlier, he's a deficit hawk. He paid close attention yeah. to the deficit. But um, the Corps of Engineers has limited revenues. There's a ton of demands on the core and they don't always you know fulfill all of the commitments that are important uh you know just yep. the mississippi alone that a lot of people are just not aware that 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 one water course takes a ton of the i use that term of the uh, core's attention and money absolutely yeah and, and and again you know it's interesting i think you know a lot of this happened during during his you know a tenure that the federal budget for the Corps of Engineers shrank and the deficit went right. up. So a lot of these projects had to become a locally funded and, you know, right. a permanent as well. 
and you know I think I think he kind of realizes realized that quick, and you know I keep on on the change that, but I mean I mean I'm, I mean that's another thing he was very helpful with was the permitting aspect. When we had to do our own projects because the Corps of Engineers wasn't getting money, um, he was very helpful in, how do I say it, m- moving along permits. Understand. Not exactly telling the resource agencies what to, what, to, what to put in the permits, but take it off of the bottom of the pile to the top of the pile. And uh, he was very effective at that. You know, I, boy, I, <laughs> sorry <laughs> we're hearing this because... We don't have Congressman Jones to dial up and ask for support any longer. So uh, for those in coastal regions, and particularly in Carteret County, but all the beach areas from uh, Virginia to South Carolina, Congressman Jones, and feel free to correct me on this one, Rudy, Congressman Jones was a key uh, part of those successes. Yeah, I mean, okay. you know, you Even, know, Lockwood, you and I have talked about about yeah. our dredging windows because of the turtles right. and you know right. other environmental environmental resources. And you know, if we don't have you know the permits in in hand at the right times, we can't do a project at all. Right. Right. Let alone go out and then bid for it and and get a decent price um, or a bid. So again, I, you know, he was valuable. Like when, when you know we had to hit the panic button, you know, he would call up St. You know, Petersburg or right. Arlington, Virginia. Uh, that's National Fishery Service and U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, uh, res- respectively. And, you know, lo and behold, you know, a week well, later, it'll that, be done. So, that, uh, that, that's important. Very helpful. And you've got, of course, a big dredging project underway right now. Absolutely. But, uh, is it on, uh, before I move to the issue of occupancy tax, which uh, uh, coincidentally are, is connected, um, is your dredging project uh, moving on schedule at this point? Yeah, looking really good. Uh, we have uh, a meeting with the uh, dredging company uh, uh, tomorrow, um, and they want to start pumping sand in about a, a two weeks. Okay. So. We'll look forward to further conversations on that. Let's talk here yeah. for a moment about post-hurricanes Florence and Michael. Uh, of course, the whole issue of beach nourishment and management and maintenance is reliant on revenues, many of those revenues coming from the occupancy tax. What's the uh, what's the feeling now at this point in light of the fact that a lot of those condos and and of course uh, hotels are at this point not not um, able to be used? Uh, what's is there a concern? There is, and it's been it's been the craziest um, result of, the, of this. You know, um, obviously for the uh, the listeners, uh, the, the county has a six uh, percent. Uh, bed tax, if you will, and one half of that goes towards the uh, a TDA uh-huh. for advertising and things, and and the, and the other half goes goes towards beach, you know, nourishment, and it's uh, and it's and it's been like that since about uh, 2001, in one, in one shape or other. So surprisingly, after Florence, between Florence and now and now, you would have thought that that uh, you know occupancy rates would have been. Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, collections would have been down, right? But they've been, but they've been up. Okay. Even though, even though the inventory is down, there's you know less hotels and condos, and that's because of all sorts of issues, such as more you know contractors in the area. Mm-hmm. Um, displaced families are are in the are in the condos and, and motels. So even though the inventory is down, the you know um, you know occupancy is you know up. Right. So there's so there's more you know revenue and then there's a, vac- a vacation insurance that that kind of also help helped out with that long term rentals right but the so you know so for the calendar year the obviously tax was up over three percent right. compared to 2017 but, which is amazing if you think about it but if that inventory is down as we head into the summer when when we need more rooms and things of that, of that nature that's 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 you know when it's going to probably uh, mm. hit us. This is not, so you know <laughs> our intent is is up big time on that. All right, um, this is a concern because, and we will wrap it up with this observation: the fact that Carteret County has been so aggressive, <clears throat> pardon me, so aggressive in managing and maintaining its beachfront. Uh, it when when Hurricane Florence came through, and of course it was a significant storm, one of a kind, as a matter of fact, uh, yes, sir. the county suffered far less damage than would otherwise have been the case. Am I right on that? 
Far less. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you've seen the pictures after Floyd uh-huh. and after Florence, and it's you know night and day a, a difference, and that's because we had that you know a buffer of sand there. Um, and I would say Florence was the worst storm um, by far. I, and um, <laughs> I, I've got the I've got the longevity on that one. I would agree with you fully. And just a comment as we wrap it up. Uh, the, the success of that beach nourishment and the uh, protection of those homes and the tax base in Carter County uh, owes a lot to the late Congressman Walter Jones. Yes, sir. Uh, stay yes, with sir. me, Rudy. Thank you very much for being with us this evening. Rudy Rudolph with Carter County Shore Absolutely. Protection Office. And you're listening to Viewpoints. More to come. Another hour just around the corner.